Here's some tips about how to move footage around the timeline and get some selects inside Premiere Pro that I wish I would have known when starting out. The first is if you notice when I move the playhead around the timeline, all of the clips underneath the playhead are getting highlighted. This action is called selection follows playhead. If you go up to the help and look up selection follows playhead underneath sequence, it's right here. By default, I don't think this has a keyboard shortcut, but for me, I've used the key D. So if I hit D, notice how I move the playhead around and it doesn't highlight any clips. If I hit D again, now it follows the selection. This is important when you are making selects because you can nudge clips up. By default, if you hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows on any clip that's highlighted and hit up, it will nudge the clip up. This is important for making things like a select on a timeline like this because I can go through and just move my playhead and move clips up to a selects line. So let's say everything that's on V2 is my selects line. The next important one in this workflow is add edit. Think of add edit as the same as using the razor tool. So if I go over here, grab the razor tool, you're probably familiar with just creating cuts on your clip, right? Well, I think add edit is faster in this workflow because I'm already moving the playhead to preview my clips up here. So I'll move my playhead and let's say I wanna start this pour here. So I'll hit add edit, which is command or control K. For me, I've made it F on my keyboard. So I'll click F and then I'll move the playhead a little bit more and hit F. And because this section is highlighted, all I have to do is nudge that clip up. And this makes your workflow pretty fast. If I just want this little section right here and this little section right here, I'm just creating cuts and nudging the clip up. The next tip is how to duplicate clips quickly. Highlight these clips. Normally you would hit Command C, move the playhead over, hit Command V, and that duplicates your clips, right? Another way that you could do this is just highlighting all the clips. So I'll hit Command A or Control A to highlight all my clips. Hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, click and drag. Now that I've duplicated these clips, let's say I wanted to make a nice consolidated track of all of these selects that are on V2. In order to do that, I would need to ripple delete these bottom clips. If I want to highlight all of these clips, I could click and drag and get all of the clips, right? But let's say you have like a five hour timeline of a whole bunch of slow-mo and you wanna make sure you highlight all of the bottom clips. Sometimes clicking and dragging isn't the best option. And this is where we would wanna use something like the track select forward tool. It's over here on your toolbar and wherever you click on the timeline, it will select the clips in front of the cursor. If you want to select a specific track, just hold shift and those double arrows go down to one, I can select these clips down at the bottom. And now we can ripple delete. And ripple delete's kind of tricky when you're talking about it in a tutorial because a lot of people just say like, you ripple delete, you hit delete. Well, it's this delete, it's not this delete. And to add to this, you also have to use the modifier shift and then hit forward delete. So if you hit shift and this delete, it won't work. You have to do shift and forward delete. That's if you have an extended keyboard. If you don't have that, in order to get the forward delete function, you would need to hit the function button over here on say a laptop because it's not an extended keyboard. So if I hold this function and shift, then I could get over here to the delete, but I'm holding one, <laughs> I'm holding the camera with one of my hands and I can't do it. You get the point. It could get confusing. So what I do is just put it on a separate key. To do that, I'm just gonna go over here to the help and look up keyboard shortcuts. If I scroll down, you can see that it's for me on a Mac, it's underneath the Premiere Pro menu, underneath keyboard shortcuts. For those of you on Windows, I'm not sure what it is, but if I were to hit Option Command K, that would bring up my keyboard shortcuts menu. If I switch these over to default, let's add Ripple Delete in a custom keyboard shortcut. So in the search menu, I'm going to look up Ripple Delete, and that is underneath edit. So right here is what I was talking about. It's shift plus forward delete. The great thing about Premiere Pro is you can assign more than one shortcut to a task. So I'm going to keep this, but I'll also click over here in the negative space. And I like using the key T. For those of you that use a lot with the type tool, you'll need to switch this to something else. But I use ripple delete far more than the type tool. And it's easy enough for me to get that from here in the toolbar. I could save this as a new custom shortcuts if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna hit okay. So so right here, we have all of these highlighted clips. If I hit T, it automatically gets rid of all of those clips and consolidates the clips on the top. Again, I'll highlight all of these clips, right click, and 
I could hit ripple delete this way. The next part is if you wanted to bring these over to a sequence that you're already working on. So I'm gonna click and drag this and I find this the easiest way is to just drag it over to a sequence. So right here we have let it percolate and maybe this is, I'll take them to reference final. Notice how I take the cursor over whatever section and it automatically brings it up. And because I'm still holding the mouse, it now brings those clips over. So let's say I wanted to bring all of these clips into this timeline and kind of sprinkle them into this sequence. That is one way to do it. But there are other ways that you could go about getting a select down to your timeline from a bin inside Premiere Pro. I didn't wanna do this tutorial unless I brought up another method called three-point editing. A tip that helps here is switching this from list view to icon view so you have thumbnails to look at. So I'm gonna click on icon view, and now we have these thumbnails. And the basic concept of what I wanna get across here is how to make a quick select go down to the timeline. So let's go with this clip number 29. If I click on it, I can use my mouse to hover scrub over the clip. And let's say I want to start the clip right when the plate enters the frame, and then maybe cut it off right there. This is where creating your ins and outs is helpful. So I'll go right here, hit I to create my in, go right here, hit O to create my out. It creates a little line right here for my ins and outs. And for insert, if I hit comma, it puts it down onto my timeline. You can choose which track it puts the clip onto by this little V1 on the left side of the lock. So if I were to put the V1 down here by clicking in this space, and then again, hitting comma, it would then put it on track V1. If I put this V1 right here, hit comma, it would then put it on track V2. Now let's move the playhead back over. And instead of hitting comma to do insert, I'm going to do overwrite. I'll label this a different color so we can see what's going on. So my playhead is in the middle of the clip. If I hit comma, it inserts that clip. If I hit period, it overwrites the clip. Now, if you want a bigger view of what's going on and really make finite adjustments to your in and out, this is where you could click on a clip. So let's say I wanted to look at this clip right here where I'm pouring the cup of coffee. You could double click on that and that brings it up in the source monitor, which is different from your program monitor. The program monitor is what basically, when you export something, that's what goes out to client or your video. When you export, the program monitor is what you see. Source monitor is just something for reference so you can bring it down to your timeline. Here in the source monitor, we have those same options. I can hit I to create my in point. I can hit O to create my out point. And if you don't wanna use keyboard shortcuts, which I still highly suggest you do, the insert and overwrite are right here. Again, my V1 is on track three. So if I were to click insert, it inserts it and shifts everything over. I'm gonna undo that. If I hit overwrite, it will overwrite the clip. That is three point editing inside Premiere Pro. You create an in, you create an out, you insert or you overwrite to bring it down to the timeline. For those of you interested in more Premiere Pro tips, I have a channel full of tutorials on this software and Premiere Gal just put out a video featuring myself and a whole bunch of other creators that do tutorials on this software. And the beginning of this video is actually a bunch of parts that didn't make it into her video. So if you want to check out that video or some other ones from my channel, at any rate, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Until next time, bye.